India data center industry has crossed 1 gigawatt in IT load late in 2024. There is an expectation of roughly 20% CAGR growth that is to the tune of nearly 20 to 25 billion dollars. What's fueling India's race to become the world's next digital superpower? Well, India data center industry has crossed 1 gigawatt in IT load late in 2024. That's a huge milestone. With AI demands skyrocketing, the recent Airtel and perplexity partnership, the data laws getting sort of stricter, and India aiming to become a trillion dollar digital economy by 2030 means that the data landscape that we're looking at, the data center landscape specifically, should be tripling in size by that period. In today's video, we'll deep dive into the Indian data center explosion that we're seeing. We're looking at what's driving it, who's building it, why this could be one of the biggest tech plays and real estate plays of the decade. Plus, we'll also uncover some of the bigger threats that are at play for the data center industry. And ultimately, we'll look at what it means for you as investors. So let's get into it. So what is really happening with the Indian data center boom? Well, as of April 2025, the Indian data center load was roughly at 1.25 gigawatts. That number is expected to go past 4.5 gigawatt by 2030, and that is a growth of nearly three and a half times in just five years. To meet this demand, we're looking at fresh capital infusion into this sector, and that is to the tune of nearly 20 to 25 billion dollars, again, over the next five to six years. These data centers require large amounts of land, and what we're looking at is also a tripling up of the built up real estate footprint based on today's numbers, which is roughly around 15 to 16 million square feet to go up to nearly 55 million square feet. Now, this is a real estate play that's happening on the back of the Indian data center boom that is going to happen as well. So what's driving all of this? Well, at its core, it's demand. Demand, but not in the usual sense. It's not about how many people are watching Netflix or are scrolling Instagram or YouTube, etc. But it's really uh, from the AI perspective, because that drives a huge amount of computing power. There's also a lot of cloud mandates that are going out for major companies, um, which have to be centered in India. And ultimately, overall, the Indian population has so much usage of smartphones, which has access to the internet. And ultimately, we're looking at a country that probably consumes more than most any of the countries in the world at this moment. So here are five specific drivers that are driving this boom. The first is, as we discussed, the AI's insane appetite for this power. It's not just sort of looking at taking up all of this data, but it's also eating up electricity, the space, there's hardware consumption, which is faster than anything that we've seen in the digital age so far. From GPUs being used for training large language models or LLMs that we, as we know them as, to finish basically massive amount of tasks in seconds, um, and these used to take up to hours right modern ai chips are you know consuming up to 300 percent more power compared to the older ones this also means that data centers now need more power per rack more cooling more space and ultimately cities like mumbai chennai pune delhi hyderabad bangalore are seeing massive demand for high density ai ready ai proofed facilities the second driver here is that there is a massive overhaul of the hardware infrastructure that's required because cooling needs to get an upgrade. Old school cooling systems just don't cut it for the data centers that we're looking at, for the AI chips that we're looking at, because the amount of heat, the processing power that's coming off of these modern AI chips could be very, um, you know, de deadly in that sense. Now, companies are switching from hybrid liquid cooling to becoming more focused on plumbing and sort of cooling of their servers. You can think of it in very basic terms as backdoor heat exchanges that are happening and sort of directly cooling the chips essentially in a loop. These essentially racks can go up to 100 kilowatts in terms of power density and, and data centers are using this tech which are getting snapped up faster than sort of prime real estate. The third point here to note is that something known as Neo Cloud is coming up and we're looking at a, a new edge for computing where things are becoming smaller, they're becoming faster and it's becoming more and more accessible for everyone. So we're moving away from these very massive giant server farms that were typically located in large cities and as you can see in this sort of graph, off, you're moving towards this new trend of neo cloud. You can think of neo cloud as many small mini data centers that are spread across the entire city. Now, why is that important? Is because
because when you look at AI, you look at 5G, you look at the internet of things that is happening, we all need super low latency. We want things to happen fast, but not take up a lot of bandwidth and become slow in the process. So we don't want to sort of wait around for a signal to bounce from, you know, Mumbai to Bhopal and back to give that data. So by building these data centers that are closer to where people are living and where they're consuming this this information, uh, we're sort of cutting down on that delay. And typically you're looking at tier two and tier three cities like Jaipur, Coimbatore, Chandigarh, potentially is becoming the new hotspots for a lot of these data centers as well. The fourth is that there is a government push that's happening. Um, there are policies that the government is uh, enacting, which requires a lot of in data or tech infrastructure to be based in India as well. So in 2023, India passed the Digital Personal Data Protection Act. And this looked at companies storing sensitive data within the country's boundaries, which meant that, you know, large global giants such as Facebook, Google, Indian banks, all of them are rushing to find storage within the Indian boundary. The government is also pushing the AI mission. They're also incentivizing for data center parks, um, which means there's a, there's a lot of cash that's pouring in into coming up with chip design, providing land subsidies, enabling renewable power to, to sort of fund and sort of provide the energy that is needed for these large data centers. All of this is naturally a part of the Indian government's plan to hit a trillion dollars of for the digital economy by 2028, 29. And in that regard, India also has 17 undersea cable landing stations, which gives cities like Chennai, Bombay, Calcutta, super fast links to the world. And then more of these are coming up, like I mentioned, Calcutta and Kochi as well, which will help position India to become maybe a global data hub as well. The fifth driver here is that the market wants more. We're looking at the sort of fast consumption and wanting it now. Right. For instance, hyperscalers like Amazon and Microsoft are already booking new chunks of capacity in Bombay for AI model training. Banks and insurance giants are shifting to co-location setups to comply with new data localization laws. Um, there's also an estimated 800 megawatt of AI specific demand in the pipeline that's already uh, ready. That's future demand that's being locked in before those data centers even exist. So let's look at some of the large players that are there in the Indian data center industry. The first one is Yoda Data Services. They have nearly uh, 430 megawatts across three massive projects. There is the STT GDC India, which has about 30 projects across uh, 400 megawatt of capacity. There's Control S data centers as well. They typically deal in the more advanced India's tier four sort of projects, which typically have about, uh, right now they have about 19 projects with about 250 megawatts. There's also Airtel is also there with its N Extra, uh, where they have about 200 plus megawatts and are growing fast to acquire more. Adani Connex is there, uh, which has about six sites and potentially a plan one gigawatt injection in the sector. Overall, a lot of the players that we've spoken about and many of the players that are there in the current space typically deal in something known as tier three data halls, which require balance and reliability and cost. Uh, and that is sort of dominating. But now we're seeing this transition towards tier four, which are more advanced. They're sort of top notch uh, fault tolerance centers. And these are the ones that are growing fast with uh, players like Equinix, Pi, Yota, Adani's, Connie X, and all of these are sort of becoming more ultra resilient. They're becoming more green, more renewable energy focused as well, and more sustainable. So purely from a growth perspective, where are we seeing these data centers coming up? Uh, typically it's the tier one cities. We look at Bombay, Chennai, Delhi NCR, Hyderabad, where we have a lot of capacity. Bombay typically is the market leader with about 41% current capacity, closely followed by Chennai, which is about 23%, and Delhi NCR, which is around roughly around 14%. We have new sort of setups coming in Pune and Bangalore as well, where there's about 300 megawatts of plant capacity being set up as you can see in the graph below. We're seeing Calcutta and Kochi also uh, seeing data centers pop up primarily because of their access to sea ports along with the sort of development of undersea cables, which at least for Calcutta is happening uh, by 2026. Now, earlier we spoke about tier three to tier four transition for data centers. What we're seeing is that there is one, a trend of becoming more green, more sustainable. Two, in terms of size, we're looking at hyperscale. Uh, no longer are data centers being built 
for smaller capacities, but they're being built at scale where mega data centers are coming up with where the capacity is in excess of 50 megawatts. And the idea here is that by 2030, the industry sort of will have a shape of about two thirds of that capacity being coming from this uh, mega data centers, which have in excess of 50 megawatts. As part of that push, we, we are seeing naturally an increase in many of these data center operators signing, you know, power leases, long term power leases, which is agreements with certain energy providers. We're seeing many of these data centers pursuing specific metrics that they want to track under this operational efficiency. There's also liquid cooling that's that we spoke about earlier, where that's becoming more of a norm for these AI clusters that are coming up. And overall, the sort of green centers that, that have this certification will grow by nearly 25% today to about 40% by 2030. And as we mentioned earlier, Adani Connex is expected to add um, six sites, which will have a total capacity of one gigawatt. Yota's D1, uh, which is in Navi, Mumbai, is already Asia's largest single building data center at about 72 megawatts. So there's a lot of growth that's happening. There's a lot of hyperscale that's happening. And a lot of this is being driven through green energy initiatives as well. Finally, let's look at some of the challenges that are there for this sector. Um, the first is power problems. Uh, as data centers move towards renewable energy and more green initiatives, the fundamental flaw here is that these data centers need extra 25 to 30 terawatts of hours of electricity every year by 2030. And if you think about it, that's a huge amount of electricity consumption. Being able to secure firm, green, affordable power, which is not sort of lagging in, in the sense of it's not intermittent, but it's actually available throughout the 24 hours is an absolute must for these data centers. The second is that there is also a lot of stress being put on the water grid system because of the coolant that's required. Uh, many of these top data centers are being set up in areas or cities that are already either water stressed or are power deficient, which means that these companies are being forced to invest either in on-site solar storage mechanisms or energy storage mechanisms or advanced cooling systems, which are not relying necessarily on water, but maybe other variants for cooling as well. There is a talent shortage in India as well. Um, the industry will need uh, nearly 1.6 lakh trained professionals by 2030 to run a lot of these data centers. And that's three times the current work workforce um, that is currently available. So we need to implement or expect a hiring spree, uh, major upskilling drive is required. And a lot of that needs to come not just from the government side, but also from the corporate side as well. Finally, there's two more points. One is, and these are more external facing. The fourth point here is currency risk. A lot of these data centers, the hardware that's required, the contracts that are being set up are typically in dollar denominated terms, which means that Indian firms can fall vulnerable to any foreign market changes that happen unless they are hedging it properly. The fifth and final point here is that uh, there is obviously global trade controls that are happening. The US has been um, very adamant with their tariff uh, mechanism, which has also pushed China to build its own trade restrictions with not just the US, but major players as well. Uh, and what we're seeing is that there is an export restriction on the sort of cutting edge uh, GPUs uh, that are needed, which is essentially slowing down AI training. Uh, and Indian firms need flexible hall designs. They need this sort of diversified chip partners to be able to stay ahead of the chain and their competitors globally. So India's journey to become a sort of digital superpower rests primarily, uh, at least from one pillar on how well it does in setting up the data centers that are needed to be the backbone for this transition. We are already one of the largest consumers of many of the world's large platforms. We are one of the largest consumers of mobile data as well. We have a significant population that owns our smartphones and that in terms of absolute size, that's huge, right? Uh, and if you look at it from a demographic perspective, we have a very young and tech savvy population. Um, the government is also quite serious about backing the sector. So the next five years could be quite historic for the space and for the broader economy as well. Purely from an analyst perspective, there is an expectation of roughly 20% CAGR growth in the IT load capacity that's being added up to 2027. Um, and then probably post that it'll sort of taper down to about 10 to 15%. In terms of investments from a public market perspective, there could also be REITs being set up for these Indian data centers, potentially by you know 2027, 2028, when the industry starts maturing out a bit. And we could also, you know, if all of the things that we've discussed earlier are 
med we could potentially see india break into the top 3 global data center markets by 2030 as well so the overall playbook is quite clear we're looking at speed we're looking at sustainability uh, and we're looking at smart partnerships that will help define how the sector grows and how the industry wins in the next 4 to 5 years those who build fast who are able to sort of capture green mechanisms of doing it um, will help shape how india sort of transitions towards becoming the sort of trillion dollar digital economy by 2030 i uh, we hope you liked today's video uh, it was a little different uh, do let us know in the comments if you want us to capture anything else or talk about any other specific topics uh, in the meantime do like share and subscribe it does really help us out thank you for watching happy investing investment in securities market are subject to market risks read all the related documents carefully before investing